Hi, this is PJ Perez. I'm the director of Parkway of Broken Dreams, and you're listening to the Happy Earth Market Podcast. Hi, everybody. I'll do, I'll do it later. Welcome to the Happy Earth Market Podcast. I'm Nathan. I'm Sam. And in the studio we have... PJ. Hi, PJ. Hey, PJ. Hello. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Have so, you listened to the podcast? I have not had an opportunity yet. I've heard really great things about it, though. Oh, from, from who? who? From the internet. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Which All internet? Of it. The whole internet. The whole internet said we were yeah. awesome? So, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. They, I, I only believe what I read on the internet. That's Me too. That's pretty it. much where I get all my information from, solely, is yeah. just the internet and on, um, you know, mostly satire. Well, you know, on the internet, that's really the only place you can find real news. Right. That's true. <laughs> Instead of fake news. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah. We won't go there. News we, is we've fun. already derailed. <laughs> so it, it, it happens. How did that work? So let's just let's just get right into it. So you're doing a project on the history of Maryland Parkway in the early '90s. Can you kind of explain? Kind of. Um, so it's a documentary film about the rise and fall of the kind of counterculture scene that was happening on Maryland Parkway, specifically around the university area. Mm-hmm during that period, um, kind of late 80s through sort of the late 90s. Um, Basically, this was the time that the Rock Avenue at KUMB was really the kind of soundtrack for, like, the city to discover new music and all that kind of stuff. And it was basically from, you know, from when that rose up until kind of when that went away and everything else that came along with that. Why do you think it went away? Well, I mean, there's that's what the film kind of explores. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there was. I think you really have to go back to what made everything happen to understand why everything went away, right? There was this perfect storm, perfect storm of things. Um, you know, you have the rise of of KUMB. You have um, the newsroom, which was like the only like European style independent coffee shop in Vegas, moved uh, from downtown to Maryland Parkway. Right. You know, in my research for this podcast, that's the only thing I could find on the history of Maryland Parkway was talking about the newsroom and it sounded like a dope spot. Right. And the crazy thing is it wasn't around for long. It only lasted for about six months. Oh, wow. On, uh, and it had nothing to do with it not being, not doing well. And I mean, it was all just behind the scenes business stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that was, Bummer. that was the spot that ended up becoming Cafe Espresso Roma. Mm-hmm. So then like nine, it was like uh, 89 or so that that opens up. And that's like the first real like spot on Maryland Parkway for people to congregate at. Um, it's where kind of everyone from like these poetry and art and music scenes all sort of came together. Whereas, and it provided somewhere for people to go there that wasn't a bar because mm-hmm. there was plenty of college bars. Sure, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Tom and Jerry's and Carlos Murphy's and uh, the Sports Pub, and that's fine. But that's th- there was nothing that's else it. there. Yeah, yeah. So the culture kind of just went away too, right? Uh, uh, I mean, it's not that it went away. It's just it, it kind of moved. So, you know, uh, the, the coffee shops, the record stores, everything that was in that part of the parkway mm-hmm. back in the, in the 90s shifted or, or found a new life elsewhere. I mean, the art scene obviously moved to downtown Las Vegas. Right. The Arts Factory opens in, I think, 98. First Friday starts in 2002. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Everything kind of shifted that way, and there was a presumption that because this was in the university area, that that it would just stay alive, right? Because there's always new students, it right? But the problem <laughs> is that the people who were who were involved were not primarily you know, in right? They weren't uh, UNLV students, culture, yeah. Right. As you as you know, or yeah. may know, the students don't cross Maryland Parkway except to go to Chipotle mm. or you know mm-hmm. to <laughs> Cafe Rio, yeah, yeah. Which there's, I mean, that's. And I, and I don't know if it's a chicken egg situation. Is it because there's nothing there for them, or mm-hmm. is it because they have everything they need on campus? Mm-hmm. There's a, they have the Starbucks there, they have multiple Super Starbucks. Super convenient, on campus. right? Yeah, cheaper too if you can just walk there. Right. Well, even just watching your preview, I was like, man, I I really like miss the early '90s. I do I do a lot. I miss I miss going to the record stores and finding flyers, and it, you know what I mean, the whole scene and digging through and finding new bands, based, basically really just on CD or record covers. You know, and be like, oh, well, this is a new punk band. I might like because this cover is awesome. Let me take it home. I don't even have an opportunity to listen to it, and I just I don't know. I miss that whole vibe. Well, I mean, it's 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 because you don't have to go out now to discover that. Yeah. I mean, this isn't good or bad. It just yeah. is what it is. Right. But you can find all this 
online. A friend sends you a link or someone posts something yeah. on Twitter or whatever. You had to go out back then. Right. You know, I, I would go hang out at Tower Records on Maryland Parkway for hours. I didn't. I mean, I would buy. I would sometimes, sometimes buy stuff, yeah. right. but like I would hang out, and they had all the coolest music right. magazines. They had a yeah. huge book sl- selection. People all the, were there yeah. hanging out too, so you had friends there. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. You would just—I mean, it'd be like walking in here. You just run into people, and you're like, "Oh, hey!" And hey, you're checking out the, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, I miss, I miss all of that. I, I mean, so what made you want to do this project? Well, I, I had already – I've already wrote uh, basically an oral history of the period for mm-hmm. the Las Vegas Weekly about 12 years ago. And this was right at the time when UNLV had launched their Midtown UNLV initiative, which mm-hmm. was this idea to – and there's, it's still going today, although it hasn't really gone anywhere mm-hmm. – to revitalize the area around the university through a public-private partnership. Right. Um, the, pr- the public part, the UNLV side, has been very successful. You know, they've – all these new buildings on campus, and you know they've they they've started to move now to the other side of the street, and they're you know it's what started the parking garage is now going to be a mixed use project, and right. they're moving offices, but there's still not that private development mm. happening. And why you, do you think though? What I mean, what's what's keeping the people from coming there? I mean, I have I have my own theories. You know, uh, I, I prefer to let experts speak about it but i mean ba- from from my experience and talking to people who own businesses there mm-hmm. it's just not and and you'll see some of this in the film um it's the it's it's the the people that hang out on maryland parkway mm-hmm. outside of let's say school lunch hours mm-hmm. you know it's mm-hmm. it's a lot of transient people mm-hmm. people just maybe waiting for buses obviously there's there's a uh, homeless problem and I don't want to say problem, but it's it's a central location, sure. right? Right. Yeah. And that I think turns off, obviously, people from coming to that area, mm-hmm. and so you it just perpetuates, right? Mm-hmm. If you if you can't show that there's a reason to hang out there, and I've talked to a friend who owns a business there, who, I mean, he's been there for twenty plus years, and he's like, I'm seriously considering relocating, mm-hmm. um, because. He yeah. expected there His to be support from UNLV, and back. there's just there's, there's just not there. right. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Um, yeah, there's a whole stigma. I mean, the whole part of that street is nicknamed Crack Alley, you know, so it's, it it, it is a hard one to, which, which is unfortunate. Um, I mean, the neighborhood around there is just a working class neighborhood, Mm -hmm. you know, um, nice neighborhood too, man, those, that whole neighborhood. A lot of those, yeah. All of them are so, so beautiful. Like the homes the are so, and the trees are giant. Oh yeah, well if you go, the, if there's a whole development of estates right off, right off of Harmon, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. a block east of there, and it's it's these it's these beautiful, amazing ranch houses. Yeah. But there's no connection <laughs> from me. that to what's happening on the street. And the same thing, I lived in Paradise Palms for years. Mm-hmm. And you know, Paradise Palms, like it's the hip, cool neighborhood. Everyone's revitalizing these mid-century houses. But there's there's you know, I mean. Bless the people who bought the Boulevard Mall and have been trying to, you know, mm-hmm. turn it around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen stuff go up and go away, and right. you know, They're it's. Doing well. Do you it's think the success. you think the light rail will help? <sighs> That's a whole. I mean, <laughs> whole I mean, do I think it'll happen? <laughs> is really the. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know, yeah, that's our. I, I mean, is too. the Greenway going to happen? Mm-hmm. I don't. You know, I was mm-hmm. really. You know, when I lived in the neighborhood, I was. I would see that these proposals come up and. Obviously, they take years to develop, but they're mm-hmm. all in the right now in the research and planning phase. Mm-hmm. They're not even funded yet. Which are, well, and here's what I was going to say: is they're already sucking up money right now. They're they're making a, a debt as we speak, trying to research it. As soon as we get the funding for it, most of that money's already going to the debt we've already made. Sure, and, yeah. You know, you know, yeah, we're not going to have any money for that. I don't. See you know, it's how. one. Of, it's Unless one. That's the... where they put the weed money, which <laughs> that could happen. But I hope they don't. It's one of the reasons we chose this this spot in particular. There's one, um, Maryland Parkway is the second busiest street in Nevada. Mm-hmm. Two, this this spot is a mile from downtown, a block from the Strip, and a mile from UNLV. So we figured if we could revitalize some sort of art scene, that this would be a good spot to do it. So that's what we're kind of banking on and hoping for. And and the it's a food deprived neighborhood, you know. Mm-hmm. And we do we work with the homeless, and you know. It is a problem. You're right. It's a problem, and it's an, an unfortunate one that exists. But you know, we can only help individuals so much. It right. doesn't really. It doesn't solve any problem. We're helping a person right now at the moment to stop mm-hmm. suffering. It's a band aid for that. Person. It's a systemic issue. But the yeah. problem is existing. And, you know, there's not enough resources, and and it's a it's a bummer. It really is a bummer. It's, you know, because 
affording affordable housing just doesn't exist. Right. And and where you know I think where it does exist, it's it goes completely the other direction. Right. I mean, right. if you think about all the apartments just west right of right here, here, just right here, yeah. it's mm -hmm. and those it's not somewhere I would hang out at night. No, and those apartments are coming down. They are. There, there. There's a development in the works right now to put another like Fountain Blue style, which is which is just going to push people out. Yeah. I mean, that, that's that's. I mean, it's the balancing act. It's always and like commercial. The commercial center, I love. Like mm -hmm. it's always been this quirky place that has endured throughout the years, despite right. it. You know, it. <laughs> I mean, it's just so many it's crazy amazing. different businesses here. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah it's I know amazing. it's nuts, right? And I think. I mean, I don't. You know, I don't want to get into. But like, I assume that the rents are somewhat lower here than if you were to go somewhere else. So like, Slightly. I think there's more opportunity mm -hmm. to do. Like, I know someone just opened an art gallery here. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple um, art galleries now. The guy that owns this spot. Uh, really, really wants square. to turn this into New Orleans Square is part of Commercial Center. Yeah. This is New Orleans Square, right. and the guy that owns New Orleans Square is really trying to turn this into an art vibey place. Like it's kind of what sold us on coming here. And he we, did, yeah. And we were the first <laughs> to come so in, and we're like, oh, it. we waited a year for the next art gallery, and we're like, oh my god, it's never going to happen. And we're, you know what I mean? But right in the last month, well, excuse me, the last two months, <coughs> three new art galleries, one really high end one, mm -hmm. and then two other ones have opened up, and that's amazing. And then the Sci Fi Center is coming back in here, and they're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. Like, uh, um, like there's a courtyard in here, and they're going to be doing one of, the, one of the big blow up screens, mm -hmm. and they're going to be doing Saturday night movies there. So there's going to be a lot of fun stuff happening here, and so it's really. And that's the whole point, too, really is exciting. that when you have, you know, a lot of things happening mm -hmm. like we've been here a year we've seen it like we have a lot of events people don't that, that traffic that kind of traffic right. just doesn't come around you know there's too much people here yeah too yep. many people so it's yeah i mean honestly I've, i have i've had occasions where you know I'll, I'll come here to go to a restaurant or something we'll pull up in the parking lot and i've had my wife go mm. let's just turn around mm -hmm. i don't you know and it's mm -hmm. not and again it's like there's so much potential but mm -hmm. I, I feel like you would need to have a critical mass. And that, I mean, that was what happened back in the day, right? There was like, you had something that was open and happening every few feet. Right. So there was no, you know, it was like, okay, here's There's the no pizza place, spots. here's the coffee shop, here's the copy shop, here's the, you know, the <laughs> guitar shop, here's the record shop, yeah. here's another coffee shop. And these were all open late into the evening so yeah. that, even at night, there was a vibrant street scene. Sure. And I feel like that, you know, it's sort of like what they what they had to do with Fremont East. It was mm -hmm. like, okay, we have to do something to be able to force Could you to have, have businesses that you can have within, like, you know, bam, 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 bam. And that's what it took because, I mean, even now, people will go, okay, from Las Vegas Boulevard to 6th to 7th, 8th, you get down <laughs> around where Atomic is, and then... You get as far as the bunkhouse, and no one's going to go further east than that mm -hmm. unless they're looking for specific mm -hmm. things. Yeah, that... I, I would almost say I'm okay to, to like 11th Street Records. Right, right. right. And that's it. That's <laughs> it because you have 11th, yeah. and the bunkhouse is behind that. Right. And that's as far east mm -hmm. as anyone who isn't looking for illicit things will go. Yeah, but I remember when we went, well, she was born and raised here, but when we first moved here, like Fremont was downright scary. Mm hmm like, there was no doubt, because my dad stayed at the El Cortez one time, and we left, and I swear to God, we were solicited for everything you could think of during the daytime. Mm -hmm. Like, we were just walking out, I'm like, Dad, why did you stay here? Like, what is going on? And I remember I remember a time when people would say, hey, if you're going to go down there, make sure you lock your doors in your car. And how long ago was that? That was in the late 90s, early 2000s. So, I mean, that's not that long ago. No. We're no. talking, you know, 15 to 20 years, yeah, and now... It's completely transformed, so it's not impossible for it to happen nope. again anywhere here, commercial center, mm -hmm. by the university, and especially the. Well, I, this is my prediction: of what's going to happen at the university? UNLV is going to continue buying up land Around on the, there, on the yeah. east side of the street, I agree. or leasing it, whatever they're doing, and they they're going to have to be the ones to revitalize it. Yeah, uh, they have this partner. They supposedly have this partnership with Vista Group, which is Michael Saltzman, who was the owner of the Promenade and mm -hmm. a few other centers over there. I don't think that he is anymore because I, I don't know if they sold the Promenade that's now Campus Village, mm -hmm. and there's nothing in there. I mean, the place is, they're remodeling it, but there's like two businesses open in there or something. That's like, a two-story spot, That's the right? two-story one with the arches where, yeah. you know, it used to be there was a two-story Kinko's in there, mm -hmm. and there was the, you know, Cafe Roma was in there, a guitar mm -hmm. shop, the, the sports pub, which became Tremors, which became whatever. There was that record store in the bottom right, yeah, too. Yeah, that, that is still there, yeah. Moon, uh, Moon Dogs Records. Yeah, I love that record store. That's still there. There's a tat, the Tatlantis is still there. Right. But, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, 
I, I don't know what's going to happen. I can look back and say, look, this is what has already happened sure. yeah. 20 plus years ago. Do you, you can't force it. It either happens organically or, yeah, exactly. you know, it doesn't stick. Well, the good thing is, and I love the Arts District, so don't take this the wrong way, anybody listening, but, like, the Arts District is very expensive. And so it's pushing a lot of artists out, and so, like, that's why a lot of them are coming here to Commercial Center or hopefully over there. Like, so hopefully, like, we're hoping that this, this thing happens, but we'll see what happens. It is happening. There's no yeah. hoping. It, I'm watching it. I mean, we had three this month. Yeah, I mean, last, so it's, like, let's pretty take, cool. Let's take last night, for instance. You're talking business and business and businesses next to each other. So last night, we had an art show and an open mic afterwards, right? Right above us, there was a soft opening for a new gallery called Random Alchemy, right? And then just down that high-end place, Core Contemporary had a huge art opening for, um, oh, gosh, well, I can't remember his name right now. Anyways, that huge art opening for a very, very uh, a good artist. So, I mean, up and coming artist. So, it's like all that happening in one night in Commercial Center. And we had several people stop by here that are friends of ours from when Reclaimed Art Supplies was open. And we're like, holy crap, what is going on in this place? This is awesome. And that is such good feedback for us mm-hmm. because we've been fighting for a year to, 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 you know what Center. I mean? And you can't do it alone. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. Takes, it takes money to yeah. create change, you know, and it's happening. It's slow. Mm-hmm. But once it starts, then it's. You right. Know, Ooh. And I do feel that New Orleans Square, once all of these spaces are filled, yeah, it's going to have to s- spill out into the rest of Commercial Center. Well, you have to give people a reason to come and to stick around, right? Yeah. And it was, I mean, I think about when First Friday got started. Mm-hmm. And the Arts District was, I mean, was nothing at the time. There was the Arts Factory and yeah. really nothing outside of that. And people would come down for First Friday. I mean, to this day, it's still, but they come for First Friday and then they leave and then they don't come back for another month, right? That's very true. Um, Now, you know, the Arts District, you have a ton of bars and restaurants and all this other stuff. Not related to art, but it's the, you need to have other things. You go, okay, I'll go to this gallery opening, then I can go over to Cornish Pasty Mm -hmm. and see some music Mm -hmm. or eat dinner or get drinks and, oh, I can go to Nevada Taste Site. Oh, I can go to Rebar. Oh, Mm -hmm. I can go to Velveteen Rabbit. And in between those things, in theory, if things go, uh, go right, you should have, there, you know, there used to be more galleries on Main Street, but there's on. things, right. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, I used to have a studio at Downtown Spaces, which mm-hmm. is, you know, over mm-hmm. on Industrial in mm-hmm. Wyoming, and it's, re- it's removed from the Arts District, like, technically by, like, two blocks. But that two blocks it's makes a big enough. difference. Huge, right? Right, because you have to cross, well, you don't cross the railroad tracks, but you have to cross that sort of you, that there's nothing there it's just there's like it's garages it, parking garages right yeah. in between i i, I only i only remember <laughs> it's, it's yeah but it's like auto shops and like yeah. there's nothing there's nothing yeah. good nothing like that you would want to go through right. yeah. so we always had trouble we had to what what we did was because there was a bunch of galleries that opened there mm-hmm. and there was a few retail stores and whatnot when uh, i moved in there five years ago we built a, a, events like we would have a First Friday related event mm-hmm. so that people could come over there on draw First Fridays, but then we would just do one off things separate from that mm-hmm. to really draw people into the building and be like, okay, all you guys need to be open so that when people come here, they have a there's reason to stick around. Right, yeah. there's stuff you know? to do. That's, we, have, we have events here almost nightly, and that's one of the reasons, right? Is to just always something cool going on that hopefully. You know what I mean? Like, it just becomes this thing where, oh, what's going on at Happy Earth Market? And then now it'll be like, what's going on at CORE? And what's going on at the Artist Guild? And what's going on at, you know what I mean? And we just yeah. That. Yeah. And so people now, now, like, physically can actually bounce around from spot to spot in here. So I'm so excited. Sorry to steal thunder, but. No, I'm. I'm it's here. exciting, <laughs> no, because it was part of Maryland Parkway, and it makes sense to talk about it because yeah. this is part of it, you know, and it's, it's exciting to be a part of the change. And I enjoy like, Maryland Parkway a lot. Like, yeah, I know what I'm saying is like I, I enjoy going to the Maryland Meet Parkway Street. Coalition <laughs> meetings, and I enjoy uh, when we went to the Pulse of the Parkway, uh, which is a UNLV project. Shout that, out to Rick Paso. Yeah, for sure. For hooking us you up know, with all that. Stuff. You know, I enjoy it because you know, like, it really is a main thoroughfare that's not the strip. Right. And and uh, there's just so much possibilities. It's so awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, and the thing is, when you're talking about Maryland Parkway, it's also so many things because mm-hmm. it, you know, it runs all the way. You know, it goes. Uh, as far north as, you know, Cashman. Yeah. And then, you know, as far south as the airport. Yep. And, you know, they're, the, they're different neighborhoods and different segments. Totally. So, like, Completely. that's why, that, and yeah. that was, that's, that's one of the things I'm I mean, trying to make clear yeah. about, like, like, the film I'm working on. It's not, I mean, about Parkway's this, this in the name, but that's, yeah. you know, because it was yeah. the center. But, you know, obvi- I mean, this is, it would be like, I, I mean, I've, 
it would be like trying to cover all 90s culture in general. <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, it yeah. was, you know, let alone all of, like, Maryland Parkway. Maryland Parkway is, I think it's very special to people, too, mm-hmm. because it, it was the original commercial drag in it was, town. Yeah, it was, was a it? throwaway I mean, through that, Vegas. That was, yeah. that, That's where every, I mean, you, you grew up here. I mean, you're not old enough to have been around, and neither am I, when it was, like, everything. But even when, even when I was a kid, even the, in the 80s, I mean, I remember, like, you know, we would when we I lived on the west side of town. We would mm-hmm. come over here because this is where all the shopping Stuff was. was happening. Everything yeah. right there at the corner of Twain and Maryland Parkway, Boulevard where Boulevard Mall, Mall was. Fun, yeah. The movie there was movie theaters there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean Maryland Square used to be amazing. Well, it used yeah. to exist. It doesn't yeah. exist anymore. Right. What can compare to Maryland Square? I don't know. I already never heard the name before. Really? No. Have, what's, what's Maryland Square? remember so it (laughs) it was so maryland square was the shopping was a shopping center that was directly across from the boulevard mall on the northwest corner of twain and maryland parkway thinking about yeah Yeah, so the the, there used to be the bank the bank was there um uh, that's where the underground record store was, which was like the the punk rock record There's store in really town. Cool thrift stores in there too. Uh, yeah, there was a and there was this <laughs> famous commercial from like the from the eighties with a jingle, "What can compare to Maryland Square?" <laughs> and that was like the thing. That was the thing. Wow. I would go to the Miller's Outpost That's there uh, across the street weird. to you know get my Miller's twenty dollar jeans. <laughs> Memories, but yeah, uh, and so so the thing with this film is like I'm it I'm it's not it's not a I'm trying to avoid it being a nostalgia trip. A lot of people are like oh it's so cool I get to relive. I'm like yes that that's what your takeaway for, is, is from it, but it's really an exploration of you know how did that scene rise up, mm. and why did it go oh, away? Oh, and, why? and 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 again when it when I say go away, it's not like. I mean, all the people who were involved in it, they're all still, well, Mm -hmm. most of them are still around. Mm -hmm. But most of them are still in Vegas doing things. I mean, you know, the senior editor of the Las Vegas Weekly has got his start, you know, doing uh, poetry readings and writing for Scope Magazine and hanging out there, you know. Uh, You know, uh, my my best friend is a record company executive. He got his start um, as a DJ at KUMV. Oh, unreal. You know, like, I mean, all these people just, you know, they've taken what... The culture that came from that, and they've gone on to do We've things with them. That happens better. with a lot of scenes, yeah. you know. What uh, what story, or can you share a story with us that like kind of really surprised you, or you're like, wow, I never even thought of it that way, kind of thing. That's that's a little. I'm trying to avoid dead air here. Uh, yeah, no, that's a little fine. tough because honestly. I know a lot of the stories because I was oh, in the scene, okay. and also I what I ended up redoing was re re interviewing a lot of the people who participated in the original article that I wrote. So I, I interviewed like twelve to fifteen people for this article. What was the name of that article? Um, uh, Days of Future Past. Okay, I read that today. That's funny. I didn't realize that that was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So basically, that is the outline for the film, essentially. Mm-hmm. I mean, because it's re it's retracing those steps except visually. Really well done article, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I liked I, how it broke down the different people, and it was good. And and the reason I, I and the reason I did it that way, just to have like, just to let people tell their stories instead of me overwriting it. Sure. Was mm-hmm. because it is really about the people. Let the right. let, let mm-hmm. the people who were there speak about it, and that's kind of the same way that the film is going to be. You're, you're going to see. Mm-hmm. It you know I'm you're not going to see me. I'm, this is not I'm not like Michael Moore. I'm not going you know, to I'm not going to be a personality in the film. Um, oh, that's too bad. But um, but yeah, I I I guess the so not a single story that's surprising because there's just there's some, there's a lot of there's a lot of crazy stuff that happened. I mean there awesome. there, there were shoot not well some of it wasn't awesome. There were shootings. There were kidnappings. There were I mean there was what? there was yeah there's there's cra- I mean there's crazy bad stuff. But the really cool thing that's a connecting thread that almost everyone's talked about is the inclusiveness of it. Sure. So the fact that, and I think this is a very Vegas thing in general. Yeah, absolutely. The fact that you can just show up and be like, hey, I've never performed on a stage in front of people before, but I'm just going to, and I mean, you could do this mm-hmm. at any open mic, but it was more than that. I, could, I, I went to Cafe Espresso Roman. I was like, hey, uh, I want to book a gig here. I didn't have anything to show for it. I literally had never played a sh- uh, this band I just made up the name on the spot like yeah. and <laughs> and like a, a month later I had a show that, like it was and, but you didn't there was there was no sort of like arbiters of quality which is good and bad but there was no one saying hey you can't do this 
whatever kind of art you want to do, whatever kind of poetry you yeah, want to do, it awesome. doesn't matter if you were a punker or a hippie or, yeah. you know, if you were like a goth kid. None of that mattered. No. Like, everyone just was in it together and no one was judgy about it. It was a thing that um, Tony Bondi, who's a, a longtime visual artist uh, here who used to show a lot there and he was involved in a lot of the production of uh, a lot of the events on in the cafes, he was saying that like his first art show was at the underground which was this punk rock record store and he was like the punks made me feel welcome like he lived in LA for 10 years and he's like the punks in LA were just like if you weren't you, if you were like punk rock then you weren't like you couldn't hang out with them but he's yeah. like yeah. the punks in Vegas were just like yeah dude whatever like you, you seem cool you know and i remember that like i'm not a punk rock guy mm. like i i like punk but i definitely was not a punk kid but like one of my best friends is Dirk Berman and Dirk has always been like, like we're just bros, like we're cool, and it's never been judgy at all. That's cool. Vegas, I just, that's one of the things I loved about Vegas since we've been here is it really is an inclusive town. Like once you're here, like nobody really cares. Do your thing, and if you do it here, cool. Like it's just I really love that about it because I grew up in South. Southern California, and everything is very segregated. You know what I mean? And that's a good point. Now, I do miss the 90s in Southern California because I could go into a record store and buy an NWA album and an Operation album at the same time. But right. That's completely different. But, um, um, but uh, yeah, Vegas is probably the most inclusive city I've ever lived in. Absolutely. Hmm. Thank you. We're, yeah. Huh? We're, I think the locals, the natives, I think we're... We're rough, man. We're a little rougher than most, you know, because we're <laughs> desert rats. And I think that, you know, we love harder and we're more accepting of people. And it's just, who cares? Who cares? There's a lot yeah. of tourists here and we see all of them. And it's a very free city. Like, so. you, you know what I mean? Like, somebody who would be a complete freak in another town is just somebody walking down the street here. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, there's no mind. You, no, mean, you, mean no, like, you mean like seeing Spider-Man just walking down the yeah, street? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. Or, or anything. No. Like, there's it's just, like what they always cares. describe uh, the, the Facebook president of the world. Have you, do you guys know the Facebook president of the no. world? No. Oh, see, <laughs> that's a UNLV staple. He's this guy who is presumably homeless who uh, pushes his, sh his shopping cart full of amazing stuff around Maryland Parkway, and he has a sign that he wears that says face or a cape. I don't remember which it is, but it says Facebook, Facebook president of the world. Awesome. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I think, I think growing up in Vegas, you either develop a complex about, like, an inferior, inferiority complex, or you go the other way, and you're just like, you know what the cool thing is? Since no one else believes in Vegas... I'm going to believe in it, and yeah. I'm just going to believe in in what in, in. I'm going to support anyone who wants to do anything here. Yeah, I agree right. with that, and I 100%. feel like that's where it comes from. You know, like I'm not native native. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been here uh, I've, since I was like 15. But you know, I went to high school here. I went to college here. I, you know, like I, yeah, you're here. This I'm is here. home. And this is home. <laughs> it's I, it's definitely if if I had grown up because I'm from Southern California originally. Also, mm -hmm. I think if I had stayed there. Or if I'd stayed in Philadelphia, even I, I feel like it, I wouldn't have had the same opportunities afforded me as were afforded it's, me here. From here, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I love. It. I really do love this town. I, I so when we started this place, we had also had a, an opportunity to buy a farm in Oregon, and uh, we're like, but we were going to do the same thing here, but on the farm, and it was just yeah, like, we were going to do Happy Earth Market only. In we, Oregon, where we don't know anybody, we don't, yeah, we're like, where there's no sun, we're like, you know what, <laughs> you know what, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna go and leave this like a, in a community where I already know a lot of people, and it took a long time for that to happen, and and everybody already trusts us. We're just not gonna bail. Like, we're, let's do it here. So we decided, yep. and here we are. Yeah, cool. Um, I want to get back to the college thing. Yeah. Do you think that? Is, there's like corporations that have moved in, right, to the college, to like like subways and stuff. Is there stuff like that happening in there? Um, well, I mean, as far as like their presence on campus and like as far as like dining and Just stuff like stuff that, or like that, yeah. Is they is there corporations actually inside UNLV's yeah. campus, like yeah, I operating mean, operating as corporations in UNLV? Well, I mean, the, in the food <laughs> services, there are. Do you think? Do you think that that has? possibly taken away from the small businesses outside of UNLV? Um, well, I, I, I think only in that it disincentivizes. I don't think it has anything to do with the type of 
the type of um, business. I mean, if you're if you're a college student going to UNLV, and there's already a Taco Bell or a Starbucks on campus, there's not really any reason to leave it. And mm-hmm. I, but I think the reason why you've seen, you know, the chain businesses do so well on Maryland Parkway, but not independent ones. Uh, like there used to be this great sub shop, Seven Simple Subs. I don't know if you guys ever went, but um, like people loved it, but they just they couldn't sustain. You know when you know I mean there's if you've got like a subway like you know mm-hmm. the, down the street, but you know you, you Chipotle and uh, Cafe Rio and I don't know what else is there. Um, like I, they seem to do okay, but I mean Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf couldn't stay open, which is crazy because I that's, thought that place was always busy. Yeah. That's, right. But you know the Carl's Jr. closed. Uh, a Seven Eleven closed. Uh, How the hell does the Seven Eleven close? Well, I think because there's just too many dang Seven Elevens. Um, <laughs> but then some small businesses do well there. Like, was that Giovanni's Pizza? Where Giovanni's, it? Stefano's. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, and then when you get closer to Flamingo, I mean, you've got places like Payments that have been around forever. I mean, yeah. Payments has been there forever. They've expanded. They're, you know, they're obviously they're a local institution now. Yeah. Um, you know, Alternate Reality Comics has been there for a long time, but. You know, R- Ralph used to be right across from the university. Uh, Ralph's the owner of Alternate Reality. Uh-huh. And uh, he moved closer to uh, Flamingo uh, when that spot opened up and Buffalo Exchange left. But if you have a, you have a college area that can't support a Buffalo Exchange? Right. It's like, weird. So you know, maybe it's the kids. I mean, what is, is maybe it's the culture on campus. I, I, maybe it's the kids that are weird. Yeah, I don't maybe? know. Maybe. I don't know. It's, it's the thing is, is UNLV has always been a commuter campus. Mm-hmm. But also... Unlike other towns, they've got the strip literally right behind right. the campus. So you right. just you just go, you know, it, you can either, when you get done, you either go across the street where there's nothing. There's not even a college bar anymore. Like, yeah, literally, no, it's the, crazy. I mean, at least there used to be the freaking frog and whatever, like, throughout the 2000s, but yeah. that's all gone The closest now. thing they have is the Crown and Anchor to a college Right, bar. you've got Crown and Anchor, and then the bar, but, you know, the bars in Maryland Parkway, you've got... Um, uh, what's what's the place that's been there forever? That's right across the street from there, which I'm blanking on. I'm sorry for this, but anyway, there's there's one place that's kind of divey that I'm pretty sure college students are going to hang out at, and then there's the dive bar, yeah. which is like a punk biker place. Which I, I mean, I love them there, and I put on shows there, but it's not. I I don't see students hanging out there. Right? They're not the normal, not the regular Joe Blow students. Not no, going to go no. not to the well, dive bar. Maybe because they go clubbing and stuff. But right, that's that's Vegas, the whole thing. Because if place. you're a kid and you're a kid, if you're if you turn 21, yeah. and you're in Vegas, mm-hmm. are you gonna? Why wouldn't you just go to the nightclubs? And that's what they do. I mean, yeah. they go to the day clubs. They go to the nightclubs. Like, people out of that equation there's 18 sometimes 17 right. to 21 Which, year olds where are they going in nowhere i don't know so where they're, they're, they're going yeah, honest know, i'll be perfectly honest they're going downtown how do they afford it they must because i don't know because there used to be when i first moved here and then when we were doing our old show the ctsm there was there was all ages places mm-hmm. that had a lot of cool shows like the beauty bar and all those spots and i just don't see it happening anymore I don't know that they ever did all ages split because they're bars. No, the, what was that spot we used to go to? Oh dear. One of the house downtown was inside that house. Oh, that was the the box office. The box office, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, the box office, yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, and that's all. It, it, that's always been a challenge. I mean, yeah. I only grew up here like when I didn't grow up as that age. No, I went to Hawaii where it's cool. Oh, well, good. As soon as I you graduated, had, I'm like, see you there. later. Well, the thing is, when you go to a place that has a beach, yeah. you don't need anything happening. You just go to the beach That's and light right. a bonfire and true. you got your night made. <laughs> right. But I mean, growing up here, we we had, I was so thankful that I came up at the time that all this was happening on Maryland Parkway because that was literally what I did from 16 to 21 wow. and beyond that mm. was hang out at, and these coffee shops were open till two, three, four o'clock in the morning. So, and what was cool is people weren't. I mean, people might go behind the 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 you know the building and drink or you know get high or whatever. But yeah. like, people were just drinking coffee and doing stuff. Like, it wasn't just Poetry. people going somewhere to get yeah. drunk and do whatever. Like, yeah. yeah, there were bars there, but you know, the only time I ever used a fake ID mm-hmm. was so that I could play a show in a bar, not so I could drink. Wow, you know, and it was a whole <laughs> different thing. Whereas now, like. Like you can only go to bars to see shows, and there or kids do you know they'll do how they do still house punk shows and stuff like that. No, I'm sure or they you do, still yeah. go out to the desert. Yeah. But 
there's nowhere for them to go otherwise. And I honestly don't. There's the Eagles are in Henderson. Yep, which is a slog for most people, right? I mean, unless you live in right. Old Town Henderson, like yeah. it's. But I mean, that's a, that's always been a Vegas thing. It's always been that if you're in that 18 to 20 period, it's it such kind a, of sucks. Yeah. It's just, it's just it's just yeah. It's yeah. there's no way around it. Yeah. That's so why most uh, of leave. when do you think this is going to come out? I know you're still working on funding and. Um. Yeah. So. Um, I really would love to finish principal photography on the new interviews by the end of this year. Awesome. Um, also, there's only so many more I can do. I mean, right. I have, you know, another like seven or eight lined up right now. And then Jeez. if this funding campaign is successful, uh, I'll be able to do a few out of town ones like for far out of town, like New Jersey or Seattle oh, cool. or Portland or whatever that I really want to get. Um and then it's going to be spending the winter just editing, you know. Like this, so there's a just lot of footage your, boiled now. <laughs> just, just stuck in a room. I mean, editing. basically. I mean, the <laughs> nice thing is I have, I know what the puzzle looks like. Sure. I know what it's supposed to look like. Basically, mm-hmm. obviously, there's surprises that have come mm-hmm. up in the conversations, but you know, it's putting all that together in a way that makes sense, and then also to fit into a you know 90 to 120 minute it's time be frame, tough, yeah right you <laughs> yeah, know because the the goal is to do uh to do uh film distribution either through a partner or just doing direct digital distribution mm-hmm. but also to possibly do the uh public television route That'd be so cool. you know there's several anthology shows yeah. um that cool. are out there you know that that sounds really so fun. that's that's kind of like I think that that's a really... I can't wait to see this. We know, I mean, I I can't promise anything, but I can introduce you. We know the lady that does the documentary selection for PBS here in town. We could make the introduction if you like. Who means? (laughs) Well, cool, man. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. How do we do... Do you have a GoFundMe going or something? So, um, it's it's a... Sorry, well, he, no, didn't no, get no. To mention he, it. he didn't get to mention when, it. He didn't when is this going live? Uh, we This is probably go Monday. Okay, well, yeah. if, uh, if you go to parkwayofbrokendreams.com, right. uh, all, all the links are there. There's a link around the – right, the first thing you see, it says, you know, contribute or whatever. Uh, it's, on, it's running on a website called Seed and Spark, mm-hmm. which is a filmmaking-specific oh, community okay, cool. builder. That's so it's neat. not just a fundraising website. They also it's do specific. distribution. Amazing. And, yeah, it's really all set up for mm. filmmakers. That's cool. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Do you have anything coming up that you need to plug that's coming up in the near future? Like <laughs> that's 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 my major project right now. I put everything else on hold. I'm not doing any comics. I'm not playing any music. I'm. Wow. Not, I I had a few TV shows. I was I was shopping around. I, I'm put pretty much everything on hold to do this to do this because I really need to just focus and get it done. Are you are you putting updates up on Facebook or anything? Yeah, about uh, we've got a Facebook page that you. I mean, I post two to three times a day oh, cool. uh, as I go and do interviews and shoot stuff I post behind the scenes stuff cool um, and you know and I also and it's also all on, on the website also so okay. what's that yeah. again parkwayofbrokendreams.com parkwayofbrokendreams.com Parkway Broken Dreams. Dreams. well thank you PJ thanks thank so you, much PJ appreciate it on. awesome sorry we got started a little late but to Happy Earth Market Podcast. Okay. Ready? Yep. Hi, this is PJ Perez. I'm the director of Parkway of Broken Dreams, and you're listening to the Happy Earth Market Podcast. Bro, Look at this you guy. didn't even have to read it. <laughs> you guys didn't see it, but his eyes never came up. Usually that takes like 20 times. You know the deal. I, I have a little bit of radio experience, so in case you can't tell by my smooth, silky voice. How old was that? <laughs>
Thank you.